Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. Coming to you from the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California, we're doing it again. I got that Mantic Mini on deck. This is from Kings of War. This is the Golden Angel for Faithful February on Twitch. And I am going to show you how to make a custom base utilizing Gamer's Grass basing bits. We're going to be using the Temple Set for obvious faithful reasons. And I'm gonna be using the original MDF square base from this Kings of War miniature. And we're gonna select some cool accents to secure to the base and build upon. I'm gonna use probably a little cobblestone, a little flagstone or whatever. I'm not a, I'm not a mason, a rock scientist. And we're gonna probably use that statue head. I love those. So first I just do some dry fitting, make sure the shapes fit. There's enough room around the borders to later do a little pumice we're going to use super glue it's going to work great on this surface we're going to position it you know you got a little bit of time to slide it around it doesn't dry super fast when it's like wood to plastic or wood to resin make sure it looks nice give it some time to set you know maybe squish it around slide it around make sure that super glue spreads out nice all the way to the borders i'm trying to get it kind of up against his foot there and look its best I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to make custom bases with the right stuff. Now, this is one of my favorite pieces. They've got lots of these scattered in their sets. Same deal, a little super glue on the old base. Drop that head on there, squish it around. GG. That easy. Now, what we're going to do is slide into an old school technique. We're going to be using some pumice. You can use any brand you like. I'm using the Vallejo dark earth mix right here it doesn't really matter i buy this stuff because it's the cheapest and what we're going to do is just lay it all out we're going to use a lot of dabbing motions rather than like swiping motions i want to leave it like mud and i want it to have a little bit of a raised you know like upward facing like striation i don't know what the word for that vertical vertical kind of uh tilt to some of the texture versus like a, a sl like a slurry just play with it it's not that hard to do what we're going to do is build it up against the seam and the border of these base bits and try to feather it up, slope it up into the stone so that there's not this like huge gap between the dirt and the rock accent. Just take your time, fill it in, try to get a nice desirable texture. Like I said, it's, it is kind of easy to fuck up, but it's also easy to not fuck up. We're going to throw a little random rock into it just for some texture. I might even paint this rock a different color at some point, but it's in there for now, giving us a little bit of a, you know, mix in the texture type on the dirt and gravel side. I do recommend painting these separately uh, from the dirt color, uh, but we're going to have a lot going on in this base and I think we'll be fine. We're going to bring it around his feet. Try to be careful not to get too much on his feet, but if you do, it's all good. You know, dirt and mud get on people's feet when they're walking in the dirt and mud. So, you know, should be fine. Same deal. We're just going to move through it, feather it down, try to build up a little mound and, and, and softly blend it into this big flagstone, a shattered temple square. You can always dip in some water to help smooth it out even further. And that's kind of what I like to do sometimes is pull out a little bit of water, help smooth out a section that I'm trying to like mold into another section i even used a little bit when i put some of the gravel in there and i'll do it again here in a second but you can see it goes on easy here's a little bit of gravel throw it in there grab yourself a little water uh, and just kind of push it down and what it'll do is it'll just kind of create more of it it'll make it like a glue and just kind of glue it in there there it is so i'm gonna let it dry here a little movie magic time lapse right here as you can see it changes to being dry real easy now we're going to use some oil washes i'm going to use some mr weathering color i'm going to use ground brown we're going to shake it up real good we're going to go raw dog right on the gravel right on the dirt there's a nice dark blackish brown it's really going to help provide some contrast we'll stain in the brown world and later we'll apply a dry brush to it no big deal and that's the cool thing about dark earth it's already brown so psh, hit it with a wash hit it with a dry brush gg now one of my ancient chinese techniques for little resin bits that you glue to the base uh you don't really need to prime them you don't need to do much i'm gonna go and grab multi-black 
uh, oil wash, but you could do pretty much any line of washes for this. I'm just using oil wash for this video. Just straight up wash that, that resin. Like, it'll be fine. You don't need to paint it. Like, just let the wash kind of tinge it, give it a little bit of definition, find its way into the crevices, snap it out, manipulate the wash a little bit, give yourself a desired look, and then later we'll dry brush that shit. Ancient Chinese technique. Too easy. But I am going to try to pull some of the excess uh, wash away from some of the flat areas. I want it to sit in some of those cracks, look its best. You see, that's the one advantage of the oil is there is a lot of work time here. And you can manipulate it. And if you're using a light brush technique, you can kind of blend it in with a little bit of a stippling dabbing technique. Same thing on the face here. You see, it just goes on real smooth, real easy. It'll mingle with the brown wash in the dirt. It'll look fine. Create a little bit of, of a nice ring, maybe even a shadow around these temple accent pieces. Same deal. We might want to remove some of the excess wash from like maybe the nose, cheekbones. Just really make it look its best. You don't want oceans of wash trying to dry in the eye sockets maybe. But for the most part, it's going to be nice smooth it's gonna find its way into those little cracks those little flecks look it's absolute best well now we got to let this oil wash dry it's gonna take a few minutes so i'm gonna snap my fingers do a little movie magic here again I'm gonna time lapse it you're gonna see it dry it took about 15 20 minutes to dry entirely if you put it in front of a fan you can ex you know excel that time a little bit accelerate that time straight up white pure fucking white Get ghetto ass paintbrush and what we're going to do is just kind of loosely start dry brushing some white in or in around the sharper breaks in the rock and just going to do it several times, adding more and more to the areas we want to be brighter. And it's going to give you a really nice natural rock effect. Truly going to look its best with very minimal effort. Just go to town on this I'm gonna speed it up real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about just gonna keep grabbing more white I'm gonna start focusing in some of that white toward the uh, kind of the triangle tips give ourselves a little bit of a nice uh, highlight there essentially just all through dry brushing we're not gonna do any real painting today we're gonna make custom bases that look super fucking sick real easy with a couple of super easy techniques like washing and dry brushing there it is it's starting to really shape up and look its best Love it. It blends right in with the base. Totally into that. Same thing. I'm going to do another pass. Really start amping up the white toward the peaks. Give ourselves some nice, strong delineation. Make it look good. Natural. A little bit of contrast built in. Love it. The face, super easy. We're just going to pull out some of the details. Uh, you know, eyebrows, eyelids crack nose lips lots of great texture there to pick up all that dry brush striation i'm going to give it a little bit of extra focus on that crack maybe a little bit up by his eye so it looks a little bit more highlighted up there booyah looking real good now we're going to dry brush the brown i'm just going to get a random golden brown color from my drawer of paints and we're just going to loosely dry brush some golden brown right over all of this we're not going to overthink it just take your time make sure it has nice even strokes you don't want it to swirl around and look like it stops and then begins again randomly in a different location just do all of it smooth strokes keep your eye on the prize guys and i also like to get a little bit of the golden brown in to the stone on that that shattered square like there's a little bit of the brown dust staining the edges, like it's been sitting there for a while. Makes it look real natural. You can even do some of this on uh, the, the feet of the model, like the calves, the, if you want. Like you don't have to. So it's looking real good. We let it dry for a second. We're going to do a second pass, a little bit more golden brown. We're going to get a little bit more on the edges of the stone. Really breathing some natural effects into the model for minimal effort. Too easy love it so now we're going to reach into the tufts of grass we're going to grab some of the metal flowers right out of the box and we're just going to just straight up set them down these are self-adhesive but i do recommend a drop of super glue and there it is we're just going to open the feathers up make it look good open the the flowers up rather 
Freudian slip, I don't know what I was thinking. There's definitely no feathers on this model. Make it look its best. I do like throwing a little bit of a random flower on a battlefield, especially around temple bases. I think it looks pretty cool. It's like magic. There we go. Everything else is dying around them, yet life finds a way. <laughs> Beautiful. So as always, I like to paint the rims of my base black. I think it sharpens the base. Just going to do a little black paint here on the edge of this MDF. Try really hard not to get any on the top after we spent all that time making the base look real good. A little bit of coal black. Nice even strokes. Just take your time. There we go. Do all the edges. Good to go, guys. So that's how you do it, guys. That's how you make a custom base looking real good for a Kings of War model with minimal effort. Shout out to Gamers Grass. Anyway, guys, play on, players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.